All right, you guys, this is Ross the Fig Boss. So uh, in today's video, we're gonna talk about planting fig trees in the ground. And a, a big question I typically get is when can I plant my fig tree in the ground? We've talked a lot about in the past about uh, how to do that, you know, about the particular planting depths that I recommend that for most of us actually in the country, I'd really recommend you guys plant it higher, plant your tree above grade in a one or two foot high mound and then bury a couple nodes down here at the base above the root system, but still bury some of this base here, uh, you know, cover that with some soil. And by doing that, you're gonna essentially ensure that your fig tree is protected all the way down here at the base and that it can re-sprout if for whatever reason it does die, the top does die, it can still re-sprout from a lower point. Um, and as these trees age, you know, it's not really a huge issue actually burying that base because you can always have a sucker that comes up from the roots or you can have something that comes up, a bud that is, you know, an adventitious bud that'll come up from, let's say, even maybe, uh, you know, lower down on the stem that's below the soil. So, you know, um, I wouldn't worry too much about that, but if you're going to plant a young tree like this, I would certainly be planting... Uh, the tree so that you're covering that base with some soil and that's what I'm going to do and that's what I do with all my trees is that if I'm going to plant them here in the fall because I'm in a zone seven or or lower we do need to give them some sort of winter protection if you're going to plant them now you know I'm only two weeks away from my average first frost so you know it's really critical I think that you guys take that extra step of protection because you can plant them in the fall and they can die uh, from the winter cold. So if you're giving them that protection that I mentioned, bare minimum, just cover the base with soil. Even if your, your soil gets really cold in the winter time, let's say the soil gets below 15 degrees Fahrenheit in the winter, cover the soil with, uh, with mulch. You know, cover it with straw, wood chips, pile that stuff up and your tree is gonna be just fine uh, come spring. And, that, you know, I'd really recommend actually planting them now anyway, because I, I do think across the board, not just with, you know, these trees here that I've selected out of my potted trees that we're going to plant uh, that are fig trees, but also across the board with all the plants I, I grow. I really like for this particular climate, planting my trees in the ground uh, in the fall or even just any plant. You know, they, they really get themselves dug in. It's not so harsh this time of the year. We typically have a lot of, uh, of moisture. You know, you don't have to worry about watering the soil. These plants get themselves dug in real nice. And uh, then the winter goes by, let's say you add even some material on top of the soil. And then by the spring, all that breaks down and the, the, you know, the soil is a lot better in that particular location. And then by the spring, it's just got like the best start that you could possibly ask for there's very little transition process that happens in the early spring that the tree kind of has to go through. It's already gone through that and it gets really the best start I think possible. These are five fig trees here that I planted um, about a month ago, so mid-September. You could do this in um, you know, mid-August actually here, early September, it's up to you what you wanna do. But these I realized were the best fig trees I had once I realized that, I wanted to put them in the ground as soon as I could. So the others that we're going to look at over here, they're not as good, at least. I didn't realize it as soon as I did with these. And uh, yeah, it's just a big recommendation, I think, getting them in the ground. And um, that way, like I said, they can dig themselves in better at an earlier date, get themselves more established. Because again, we're only two weeks away from that, that average first frost. What real benefit are they going to get? Uh, because the soil at some point here in December, you know, about, we're about a month and a half away from the soil just being so cold and having so many frosts at that point that we're not really going to get much of a benefit from planting them um, much later than I, I am going to this weekend. So that's my plan. That's what I'm going to be doing. And that's what I, I would recommend to you guys. Uh, you know, other purposes here and other things I want to mention is that uh, you know this here is a uh, Aishia Black from UC Davis highly diseased 
uh, with fig mosaic virus. It always has struggled with that. And I've talked a lot about this particular variety this year, actually. We tasted the fruits and we talked about my in-ground tree over here that's uh, been in the ground for a couple of years. It's getting itself established. And it's been very, very healthy by doing that rejuvenation pruning. Now I have an air layer on that tree. Now that it's so healthy, I figure it's a good idea to take that air layer and put it in a pot because I don't have a really healthy Aishia black uh, that's in a pot. I have actually four of them. Three, I think, are grafted, and this one here is on its own roots. So by taking this unhealthy tree that's on its own roots, putting it in the ground, rejuvenation pruning it over time, this tree will also become very healthy and also very established like that, that I can then use as stock for other plants and really try to evaluate this particular variety, uh, not just in the ground, but also in a pot. And I like to do that with the varieties I really like as the ones I have over there uh, that I planted in the ground. I don't ex ne necessarily have a copy right now that's in a pot because I just planted it in the ground. But at a future date, I probably will air layer or root something from that and put it into a container to kind of continue to evaluate those particular varieties. I really am kind of been a firmer believer in that in more recent times that I'd rather have one of each, you know, one in the ground and one in a pot of the varieties I really, really like um, for, you know, for many reasons. Actually, if I had more room, I'd probably do multiples more than just one, probably do like two or three of each. But um, this is another tree here that we're gonna plant in the ground which is a favorite that recently has become a favorite. And this is called prosciutto. And I just want to mention this variety because it's been such a stunner. It's been such an impressive fig that I never really got a chance to talk about it. We have one fruit left and I, I did actually just harvest one last night that I was so impressed by that, um, and I never did a video on it. I kind of, I'm kicking myself here for not doing that. We did do a video though, actually right here where we had a plate or uh, an assortment of varieties after working for a, a, you know, a while that day and I was talking about selling trees in that video and we talked about how really the best fig is the most ripe. I mean that was just the lesson of that video and this fig here, prosciutto, was the standout from that video and it, it does really produce a high quality fruit because it gets very ripe more consistently without really any problems. So it does, it can split. So it's not like this figs in, you know, impervious to any problems. Um, I have noticed that the fruit flies do bother it, but um, <clears throat> you know, really there's only one fig I can even think of that just is impervious to all problems, which is the uh, Black Celeste this year. Really no damage from the rain and no damage from any of the, the spotted wing drosophilia, those fruit flies. I don't get it. I think the skin is just special on that one and they just can't really get through it or whatever it is. Uh, this fig, however, has a really good drying capability to it. And it seems like it doesn't take very long, even though it's been very cold. Um, it has been quite dry, but this fig seems to really shine here, I think, um, that I'm really impressed with it for many reasons, and especially about that drying capability. It is an Adriatic type. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, so th this particular variety is very similar to many other varieties that we've talked about. You know, I, I talked about the classic Adriatic fig that we have there, which is like green Aishia. We talked about Verdino del Nord from Tatiana this year. I actually really like that one too. We've talked about in the past, you know, white Madeira. I, we've talked about Blanche de Duce Cezanne. We've talked about strawberry verte. Uh, I have others, you know, that I'm growing as well, like Verdino Giacomo and Rockaway Green. And <clears throat> we've talked about Green Michurinska. And while all of them are slightly different than each other, and maybe you can't even classify them all, I wouldn't classify them all under that Adriatic umbrella. This one I would. I would classify it under an, an Adriatic umbrella. But they're not the same. Like I said, they all share or have similarities, but they have different characteristics as well that are uh, really separate them and, and make them a unique variety. And this one to me, maybe I'm crazy. I don't know. I have to continue to evaluate it next year. 
but it seems like it dries super well and super easily. Whereas the other ones I've grown that I've mentioned don't typically do that. They seem to get more damaged and, um, you know, more prone to the rain messing them up. Whereas this one just has got that really good skin, I think, that uh, Black Celeste has. And if it wasn't for the, um, you know, the little bit of splitting at the eye on this particular variety, I would probably say it's one of the best I have. It is among some of the better varieties for sure. This is um, easily, I think, in my top 20 right now. So we're gonna plant this in the ground. I'm, again, I'm really impressed with it. We'll see how it does going forward, but uh, the fruit quality has been phenomenal. And I, I just would highly recommend it to, uh, to a lot of you guys. So um, that's kind of this video is that I'm gonna go through, <clears throat> continue to go through some of the potted trees here. We have something like, uh, you know, Verdone from Nikki, we've talked about, Hatib de Argentile, uh, those are air layers, and I'm going to plant those in the ground as well this weekend. So not only, not only am I planting this late, the five-gallon size trees, but also these small air layers that really aren't even fully rooted, you know. Um, now, what I won't do is plant the uh, Juale Noir, which over here is to be honest with you, not really well rooted out. There is some roots within this, um, and therefore I'm gonna cut this at dormancy, and then I'm going to put it in a pot and keep it in a pot all winter, and then in the spring I'll probably keep it in a pot until um, sometime in the summer, and then I may plant it in the ground depending on you know, if I'm gonna get this property by May as I'm expecting to. So uh, we're not gonna be here forever, but I figure I'll, uh, I'll plant these particular trees that I hold so dearly, get them established in the ground this upcoming season and uh, go from there. You know, uh, uh, I can always, I don't have to dig everything up immediately, um, et cetera, et cetera, right? There's so many different reasons for this. But anyway, that's this video here, guys. Um, I hope that kind of gave you guys some options, maybe a little bit of an insight on what I'm doing. And uh, we'll see you guys soon, okay? Thank you for watching, take care. Hit that subscribe button, check out our blog, uh, figboss.com. We'll see everybody for the next one, take care.